we need to create cities that are good for people from zero to over 100, regardless of the age or the ability or the background. As an example, people that ride bicycles, people say, oh, Gil, do you think that's a, bicy a, a nice bicycle? I say, look, it's very simple. Use the 880 rule. Think of someone that you love around eight years old. Your child, your grandchild, your nephew, you know. Now, think of someone that you love around 80. Your brothers, your sisters, your parents. Once you have that two people, would you send them on that bike lane? Would you, would you feel safe? If you would, it's because it's safe enough. If you would not, it's because it's not. In, in cities, doing infrastructure for bicycle is very complicated. Why is it very complicated? Because it has to have connectivity, connectivity. If you're gonna do 20 soccer fields, you can do two this year, three the next year, five the none the next year, and, the, and each one is independent of each other. Even if you're gonna do walking, walking also, you can improve the walkability in these two blocks or three blocks, or the, and it works. But cycling is, if there is no connectivity, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So first, it has to be long enough connecting origins and destinations. And second, it has to have a physical separation between the bicycles and the cars. We try to invent a lot of things in the US and Canada, oh, but what if this land? No, let's see what are, what are they doing in countries where 40, 50% of the people bike, uh, in, in Utrecht, uh, in the Netherlands, or in, in Rotterdam. I love Rotterdam because Rotterdam is a city that during the Second World War was bombed and was rebuilt very much like a North American city with wide roads and whatever. And now they say, oh, what a big mistake, how we retrofit. And they retrofitted, so about 26% of the trips in Rotterdam are on bicycle. Yeah, more than 40% in, in Amsterdam. But when you go to Amsterdam, it's a city that is older, and people say, oh, but we don't look like Amsterdam. But go to Rotterdam, you do look like Rotterdam. And over 26%, so let's see those. All of the bike lanes are, have a physical separation, all of them. You go to Copenhagen, all of them are on the right side. The sidewalk, then the bike lane, then the parked cars, then the moving cars. Here in North America, we sometimes become creative and then we say, oh, we, we're gonna have sidewalk, then parked cars, then bike lane, then moving cars. Uh, there is nothing as dangerous. I ride, I, I ride a bike 365 days. I bike at plus 35 in the summer and minus 35 in the winter. But when you are going in between parked cars and you don't know if they're gonna open the door and moving cars, it's very dangerous. No, the bike lane has to be next to the sidewalk. Also, the cars are, go very fast. So we need to have a physical separation so that the cars will not go over the bike lane. So this is something that should be basic. We need to have, we need to separate pedestrians and cyclists because we walk at around three miles an hour or five kilometers an hour. The cyclists go around 13 miles an hour, 20 kilometers. So we cannot mix, because when we mix, the pedestrian might get injured. So uh, we, we might have in the parks on multi-use trails when they are really wide enough and there is not a lot of density. When you start having a lot of people, then even in the parks you need to separate. But on the streets, so you need to have an area for people walking, an area for people riding their bicycles, a physical separation with people in their cars. There wouldn't be any possibility to have large numbers of people riding bicycles in any city in the US or Canada or anywhere in the world if we don't do protected bike lanes.